Well, now on AT10, it's time for our exclusive interview with a man who provided the backbeat for the Beatles. Singer, songwriter, drummer, and actor Ringo Starr. As you probably know, Ringo was born Richard Starkey in what is known as the Dingle section of Liverpool. He was playing in a rival band called Rory Storm and the Hurricanes when he was invited to take the place of drummer Pete Best back in 1962. And Ringo has said that the reason he took the job was because it promised a regular paycheck for 25 pounds. That was a little more than $60 a week back then. We recently spoke to Ringo in his hotel suite in Beverly Hills and asked him what changes he had to go through to become a Beatle. Uh, I had to change my hairstyle, <laughs> get rid of the beard, and buy a new suit. That was the only three requirements. To their millions of fans, the Beatles always seemed like a happy together foursome who felt confident and secure with each other. But Ringo told us that the Beatles themselves didn't always see it the way their fans did. I think one of the weirdest uh, sort of situations we were put in, one time we were making the White Album, and uh, I felt really depressed. I felt I couldn't play, and I felt, you know, they were all friends, and I was the outcast, you know outsider and uh, so i went around to uh to john and said look man i'm leaving the band you three are so close and i feel out of it and he says i thought it was you three <laughs> <laughs> so i went to paul and said the same and he says i thought it was you three so okay as long as we're all going through the same hurdle we'll get over it as a member of the beatles ringo composed only one song by himself a tune called don't pass me by which is on the beatles white album we asked him if the songs of John Lennon and Paul McCartney were ever a mystery to him. Well, name one that wasn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, like everyone else, I have my interpretation of whatever the song was. And, uh, but I was lucky enough to say, yeah, well, what does that mean? Or what are you saying? Or I think it means this. And they say, fine. Uh, you know, people interpret so much into songs, and um, I'm afraid we're all to blame for that. You know, everybody does it. We all think we know what they're saying. I mean, it's like on this uh, album, not not to cut that off, but just to get back to it, because it was brought to me the other day. They say, oh, well, you have a line in the album, stuff and take the time to smell the roses, stop and take the time to fill your noses. Well, they were insinuating it was some sort of dope joke. You know, and it's the last thing on my mind was that it was a dope joke. It was stop and take the time to look at life. And, you know, they are pretty things to smell and take your time and take it easy. You know, a few people were unsure of Ringo's ability as a drummer in his early years with the Beatles, including their producer, George Martin, who substituted another drummer for Ringo on the song Love Me Do. But there's little question that Ringo developed into one of rock's best drummers. We asked him if he could define his own unique style. I'm a left-handed, right-handed player. And if you can understand that, folks, you see, when I was born, I was left-handed, but my grandmother thought I was overpowered by witches and made me right with my right. So anyone who plays drums, you play this way, the snares here, the hi-hat, and the bass drums here, so you play like that. Now, if I was a right-handed drummer, I could come round the tongs, natural flow. Now, my problem is I come off with the left, so it, that's when it, I break everything up because I can't actually do <laughs> the normal thing. So that's what created the style of my playing, you know, made it uh, uh, more like uh, just my style. I hope that answers your questions, little drummers. <laughs> and our thanks to Ringo and his lovely wife, actress Barbara Bach, 